welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. If you are returning, you already know it. You are fabulous. All right, so if you hear something in the background, it is absolutely pouring rain here at home. Um, so you might hear a little bit of that. Also, if I look a little different, I went and got my hair did. It's a little blonder. Love it. I always like to go just a little bit blonder. Even in the wintertime, you know, some people go a little darker in the wintertime. Not me, girl. I am blonde, blonde, blonde to the core. I love some blonde. So, anyways, that ain't got a thing to do with our DIYs. <laughs> Today's video is going to be fall DIYs. We're going to be using some Dollar General items, some Dollar Tree items, and maybe even some thrifted items. You never know with me. Um, be sure that you stay tuned to the very end of this video because that is when I will announce the winner of the silicone mat. So, yes, you have to watch the whole video, okay? All right. Let's get into these DIYs. Okay, y'all. So for this first DIY, I have got one of these carvable pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. And I am going to be painting it with um, the cashew color of the Waverly chalk paint. Just giving it a good coat. I end up giving it two. But actually, on the second coat, we're going to do some... Uh, some highlighting, some contouring and highlighting on this pumpkin. And I call it that because it's the same as you do, you know, when you're doing your, your makeup. I mean, you are highlighting and contouring your, your makeup. So you're going to do the same thing with the um, paint in order to get those like dark hues uh, see how I'm putting that? That's mineral color. Now, I don't know what happened to the footage of me actually showing y'all the paint colors, but that is the color mineral, and I'm just going down each groove uh, on this pumpkin, and then I'm going back over that with um, Apple Barrel's Burnt Umber. Two really good colors to do this with. And I just continue to do this over this pumpkin until I get it to where I want it. I get it the, the get it to look the way that I want it. You can do it any way you want. You know, you could use any colors you want. This is really not a specific way to do this, or I don't feel like there is. I feel like you just do it until it looks the way that, that you want it to look, the way that you're, you know, what you had envisioned for it. All pumpkins are different, so, you know, you do it your way. All right, so once I get it done, get the painting done, I am going to be putting succulents on top of this. Now, I got this idea from a lady named Tony Stevens um, off of Instagram. She had done one of these, and it was so cute, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have a succulent pumpkin. pumpkin. That's a must. That is an absolute must. So, I'm just hot gluing these directly to this pumpkin, and I just picked out some different shaded color, you know, shaded ones, different colored ones, um, and ones that kind of looked a little different. They didn't have the same shapes. And I just added these all over the top of that, that pumpkin. So cute, y'all, and so simple. This was so cheap and so simple. You could even leave the pumpkin orange if you wanted to. If you were going with the traditional fall colors, you could totally leave that pumpkin orange and just add the succulents and boom, you have got a nice piece of decor. Just added those succulents and there you go. So stinking cute. I just love this. I feel like this would go with any any decor. This could go boho. This could go farmhouse. This could go shabby chic. I mean, really, it's just endless with this. The succulents are so classic that they just really go with anything. I just love this. Love it. Too, too cute. Alrighty, so moving on to the next one. I have got three different pumpkins here that I got from the Dollar Tree. Each differently shaped and um, different sizes. 
And what I'm going to do is I just actually peeled the uh, the pumpkin that had the glitter all over it. I just peeled that right off. It literally peeled off. But now I'm using the back side of those pumpkins anyway, so it doesn't matter. Now, I painted one pumpkin in the color Mineral by Waverly, one pumpkin in the color Celery by Waverly, and the small pumpkin in the color Cashew by Waverly. Now, we're going to do the same thing that we did um, to the succulent pumpkin. We're going to do that to these pumpkins. We are going to put a couple contour lines in and a couple highlight lines in, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. But what I did was leave the paint. I, I painted it first, painted my first coat. Then I go in with my second coat, and I'm going to leave that coat wet while I do the lines of the uh, contour. And I just go straight on to that wet paint. And all you're doing is really painting those lines to to give this pumpkin some character, to give it, you know, give it a little more dimension. And that's, you're making the lines where the indentions would be on a pumpkin. That's all you're doing. You're just putting those on there. And I just go all the way around the edges real good, darkening that up some. And you kind of smear it. You're literally kind of smearing the paint. Now, I'm going to go in with some of the cashew and highlight now. So you're, you've got two different colors going on. It really adds some nice dimension to this pumpkin. I love it. I think I think these turned out so good. I love these, actually. And honestly, this is the first time that I've really tried to do the pumpkins this way, to actually paint the pumpkins myself. So I, I'm, I'm loving these. I think they turned out great. So once again, I'm doing the same thing with this mineral colored one. I am just taking that apple barrel um, burnt umber, and I'm going to put my lines in, my contour lines. Just adding those and then going to add them around the sides, around the edges. This turns out so good. I just absolutely love it. And once again, like I said, you're just smearing that paint. Honestly, you can do these any way you want to. There is, I don't feel like there is a specific way to do this. I feel like with when it comes to crafting, you just do it the way that you want it to look. You continue to add the paint or take away, you know, the color until it reaches the point that you want it to look, whatever you had envisioned, you know, for it to look like. So these are just ideas, you know, more or less. You do it the way that you want it to look. So I'm going to take that smaller pumpkin and I'm just going to go right in with that burn umber add my contour lines. And now because I'm using the cashew, I'm actually going to take a little of the mineral this time to add my highlight lines. So we were highlighting with the cashew on the other two pumpkins. So in order to keep all these colors kind of mixed together and everything kind of, you know, going together, I took a little bit of that mineral color. I would just wiped my paintbrush off, took a little bit of that mineral color, and went in on top of that cashew. These turn out so, so good. I just absolutely am in love with these. I almost messed them up. You'll see here in just a minute. <laughs> almost had a boo-boo. Well, I did have a boo-boo, but it, it worked itself out. But yeah, as always, there's something has to happen every time I craft. Something's got to happen. Tell me in the comments if you're like that. When you're crafting, does something happen? You spill the paint or you uh, knock over the project that you just got through building. Or, yeah, I do stuff like that all the time, y'all. <laughs> I blame it on the blonde. That's, I don't know, clumsy blonde. I don't know what it is. But I do. Something happens every time I craft. <laughs> so, once I got these the way that I wanted them... I am actually, as you see there, one more time, let's do this. Do you see the green pumpkin? I am splattering paint all over it. Oh, yeah. Totally splattered paint all over it. I was going across that uh, 
stem on the other one and ended up splattering paint onto the green one, the celery colored one. Are you believing that? Oh my gracious. I was actually able to take my brush though and blend it in, so it's okay, <laughs> but Lord have mercy. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen to me while I'm crafting, I'm telling you. All right, so this these are stickers from the Dollar Tree, and I just actually cut them off of the uh, thing that they came on. That way, I could kind of place them and play with them and decide exactly where I wanted my placement of them to be. Now, once I figured out how I wanted them to be placed, I decided how I wanted my pumpkins to be, and I just went ahead and glued them together, hot glued them together, took my smallest pumpkin, hot glued him down, now I'm going to add my words. So I started out with the home. Kind of, I had kind of figured out where I wanted my placement to be before I um, glued the pumpkins down. But you know how it is, or I am at least. I'm so OCD, it has to be just right. So I actually place these words and pick them up a couple times. You will see before it's all said and done. <laughs> I have to put them down and then pick it up and reposition it. And, you know, that's just part of it. That's just the OCD thing. Oh, my goodness. So I look at it and I decide, nah, eh, not exactly where I wanted it. So let me take this off and reposition it. And then maybe we'll, you know, I don't know, look at it again. And once again, take it off. <laughs> It's got to be just right, y'all. It has to be just right, I swear. All right, so once I did finally get it the way I wanted it, I took that metal uh, leaf that was on the one, the farmhouse looking pumpkin, and I just, it's green, so I just painted it with that burnt umber, and y'all, that's such a good paint. That acrylic paint literally covered uh, that little metal leaf with the first coat of paint, and that's acrylic paint. That's not chalk paint now, but that's what good coverage it is, and it's apple barrel, such good coverage. So I'm just taking my heat heat gun again, and I'm just going to dry that real quick. If y'all don't have one of these heat guns, you really need one. They work so good, and now I used to use a blow dryer. I'm telling you, this heat gun for $10, $15 is totally worth it, totally worth it. All right, so I will, and actually, I'm going to leave a link in the description box for that heat gun, just for y'all, because I'm telling you, it's so worth it. Totally worth it. It cuts your crafting time in half by having that. All right. Now, once I got everything situated the way I wanted it and all my stuff back on the way I wanted it, I am taking some Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and I'm just marking me off two little spots here where I'm going to hot glue these down and we're just going to make a little stand for this. I wanted this to stand up. I did not want to make a, a sign because I already had something in, in mind for this this uh, video. I already had a sign and something else. Um, and I just wanted to make, you know, like a shelf sitter or centerpiece or, you know, just you could do pretty much anything with this. But like I said, I just didn't want it to be a sign. And there you go. So, so stinking cute. I love this. So fall, totally farmhouse. I am loving the kind of neutral colors. I just love it. All right, y'all. So for this next DIY here, we have got this little uh, tray that came from the um, Dollar General store. I paid $2 for this tray. Are y'all believing that? So cheap. Well, it said something about falling leaves and football or something. I don't know. And not that I'm not a football person because, hello, you, we're, you, I'm Southern. We, we do football in the South, okay? <laughs> but not that the North doesn't do football, but I'm just saying you have to be football when you live in the South. But it's not part of my decor, okay? Not... I don't go that far with it. So, and plus I didn't like the orange that was on here because I am trying to stick with the neutral color. So I took that Waverly uh, Mineral chalk paint and just painted right over the top of that. Now I'm taking some of the words from the Dollar Tree 
and I'm just going to add just a little touch of hot glue. Literally just a little bit of hot glue. Now, I'm an over, I'm an, I overdo it every time I hot glue, but I really tried to go light on the um, hot glue with this because I didn't want it to smush through. So, once I got that on there, the word on there the way I wanted it, I just took some of my um, jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around this a couple times. I kind of glued it in the front because where that, the, uh, tray itself was kind of slanted. I didn't want it to bulk up, so I just glued it down there in the front, just wrapped it around a couple times. Y'all, that's how simple this was. Two bucks. Well, three dollars, if you count the word. How cute for so, so cheap. I just snipped it off, secured the back, glued it down, Oh, yeah, and added a little bow. There we go. So, this is so nice. I feel like this is very high-end looking. To be a $2 uh, tray from the Dollar, Dollar General store. So cute. You could use it as a tray, obviously. That's what it is. Or you could sit it up. Use it as a picture. I love it. All right, this next one, I'm telling y'all, is so simple, and it turns out so good. I have got one of these thankful and blessed pumpkins from the Dollar Tree that everybody has got right now. You can totally find these. There's hundreds of these at the Dollar Tree right now. <laughs> so I'm going to take that celery paint... And I'm going to paint, I'm, as you see, I did not sand the, the glitter off of this. I didn't do any of that. I went right over the top of that glitter with my paint. I wanted that on there. I just wanted to leave it like it was, and I'm going to paint right over the top of that. You'll see what we're doing here in just a minute. But like I said, don't, you, you don't want to sand any of that off. Go in with my heat gun, dry that first coat, going in with the second coat. Now, while that second coat is wet, we're going to uh, add some of the contour lines, just like we did with all the other pumpkins. And I don't go into a lot of detail with it on this one, just because you've already seen it twice. So I'm sure it would kind of bore you to see it again. But I'm just going in with that mineral color, smearing it in, adding my contour lines and then I'm going to go in with a little bit of that burnt umber with my small brush. Now when I do the burnt umber, umber burnt umber when I did the burnt umber on all three of the pumpkins that I've painted today I used a small brush for that dark uh, brown. That way you don't get just a ton of, of paint you know no chance of you getting a ton on at one time because you're using that small brush. So with this one, I just went right back over the top of that with my mineral. Because now I didn't want my, my um, contouring and my highlighting to be just real dark on this one. There's a reason why. You'll see here in just a minute. But I just wanted it to be there but not be very, very... Um, you know, not just real present, but to, you could see it a little. Kind of be in the background, I guess you'd say. So I just keep adding until I get it the way I want it. Like I said before, it's honestly more about the way you want it. So I'm going to take this huge Sharpie marker, and any, mar any black marker would work. If you can see right there, where we left that uh, glitter, actually left a raised spot um the words are still raised up on this pumpkin and i was able to trace right over the top of all of that the entire words y'all this was so easy and you it makes it your own you know i love it any color pumpkin you want and then a black marker that's all you need for this project so easy. Literally, this cost a dollar, and it turns out so 
so stinking cute. It really looks like something that you would buy at like a Hobby Lobby or at a um, arts and crafts fair, something like that. I literally just traced over the words. And the reason that you can still see them is because we didn't sand the glitter off. We just painted right over the top of it. So it kind of compacted it and then it was there. I just traced it. This turns out so stinking cute. Check that out. So easy, y'all. All right. Once I got my words on there the way that, that I wanted them, I just took some jute twine, covered the stem, took that metal leaf, put that dude back on. Now, I decided to add a buffalo check ribbon to this just to kind of give it that extra little notch, you know, just give it, add, add that last little uh, oomph to it. Yeah. This turns out so stinking cute. Check it out. It really looks like professionally done, and all I did was trace those letters. So easy and so cheap, y'all. So, so cheap. All right, this last one I had so much fun doing, and I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So I've got a hula hoop, and I've also got the $5 bundles of um, fern from Walmart. Now, the hula hoop was a dollar. I got it at the Dollar General store. I just opened it up, took the rocks out of it. Then I just started to peel off um, the leaves, the limbs. I, I want to say limbs, but ferns don't have limbs. I started to peel off the fern leaves by just taking that little top off, and then they will pull right off. Look at how much is in that. That's just one stack, y'all. One. And look at how much is in there. This is so easy. I actually saw this on Glue Guns and Roses. Y'all, She Megan makes one of these on there, and it turns out fantastic. I have been wanting to make one ever since I seen her do this, and I just... I haven't gotten around to it, but I thought this would be the perfect time because I really wanted to add this to my living room. So all I did was hot glue these right to this this uh, hula hoop. Literally just hot glued them on. Now, after I had hot glued a couple of these on there, I decided I was a little worried that they were going to come off with time, you know, because it is plastic and you're just kind of hot gluing plastic to plastic. So I would actually add the hot glue and then take a little piece of painter's tape and twist it around there while the hot glue was still hot. Holly from Hot Humble Pie actually um, mentioned in one of her videos that if you add any kind of like painter's tape or, um, oh, um, like masking tape, to hot glue while it's still hot, it will actually like get extra sticky. So I just kind of remembered that she had mentioned that and I thought, oh, that's perfect. That will actually hold these these fern leaves on there and then I'm not, I, ain't, I don't have to worry about them coming off. So yeah, just added some hot glue, added my fern leaf and then literally round, wound around some um, of that painter's tape. This turns out so stinking cute. I love it. I actually already have this up in my living room. <laughs> I, I just fell in love with it. I've been wanting to do it for so long. And I, I like I said, I, I saw Megan do it on um, Glue Guns and Roses. And, and I'll have that linked in the description box. I will have her video linked in the description box, actually. She does a video that has like, I think there's like five or seven different fall wreaths. And I believe this is in there. One of, one, I, I know it's on one of her farmhouse, but I believe she also added it to the her wreath fall wreath um, video. So I will have that linked in the description box so y'all can check that out for sure. Because hers is just oh, it's fabulous, absolutely fabulous.
Now, I used two bundles of that $5 fern. So in total, this this um, wreath cost me $11. Okay, we'll say $11. A dollar for the hula hoop, $10 for the fern leaves. You could have used one fern leaf, $5, okay? But I wanted mine extra full, just really full and really um, bulky with those leaves. So that's why I added the extra uh, set of fern leaves in there. But either way, $11 for a wreath this size, I would give that every day of the week, okay? Wreaths are expensive nowadays. Lord have mercy. This turns out so cute and so simple. I literally just kept going around and around and around until I got to the end here. Then I just tucked it under. So, so easy, y'all. Check this dude out. I am in love. Look at that. I love this, y'all. Oh, my gosh. I love it. So stinking cute. This turned out, it looks so high-end. Um, if I do say so myself. <laughs> and this is everything all together. I hope you enjoy. What's up, guys? My name is Gracie. This is my mom, and this is our outro. <laughs> I love it. Okay, y'all. Oh, and this is Bella. Oh, my gracious. The dog just will not get out of the scene. This We've tried this a hundred times now, and it's just not going to happen. So, I hope that y'all enjoyed those DIYs. Um, I have had a really good time doing this. I'm finally getting into the theme of the fall deal. So, it's hot where we live, so it's really hard to get into it. But I am actually getting there, so there will be plenty more fall DIYs to come. All right. Now, we're going to draw and see who won that mat. So... <laughs> Grace Ray, you go for it. All right. We really did put them in a hat. Like, we literally wrote the names down and put them in a hat. Old school. Old school, that's right. <laughs> and the winner is? Da -da 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 Carol Jenkins, North Carolina. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Carol Jenkins from North Carolina. All right, Carol Jenkins, you need to email me. My email address will be in the description box. You email me your address, and I will get that dude sent right to you. That is so awesome. All right, so I am so glad that y'all got to meet my daughter. Isn't she beautiful? Follow me on TikTok and Instagram. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she, she's putting her promo in there. Yeah. All right. So thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, be sure you like, share, and subscribe. Yeah. And hit that notification bell. So you oh. get notified every time we put out a new video. Very good. You did good. I love it. I might have practiced in the mirror before. <laughs> I love it. I'm so glad that y'all got to meet her. All right. Y'all have a blessed night and thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.